So, Erin and Derek, when you're ready, take it from there. Go ahead. Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Aaron. I will be your lead mediator and I have my partner Derek. He will be my um, co-mediator and so we understand that this is your very first time in mediation. So the process of mediation is to bring two disputing parties together so we can facilitate them coming to a solution. We do not find the solution for you. That is something you guys come up with on your own and we do this in a very mature and civilized environment so that means not having anyone else in the room since this is a virtual you know online mediation and it's very important that no one videotape or record this session because everything is very confidential that is the number one rule and we want to make sure that it is kept up at all times so I'll have Derek my co-mediator explain a little bit more about the roles of the mediation go ahead Derek all right hi everybody uh, you know like like she was saying the confidentiality is really important everything that we talk about in this mediation has to stay between us so that means that no more telling your friends or anything about it because it's uh, solely between us Honesty is really important in this process right here because we believe that this is a proven system that helps solve problems and really help people figure out uh, issues. And like we're 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 non uh, biased. That means that we, we don't take sides on it. We just help facilitate communication. So uh, just remember that it's confidential, and uh, the we appreciate you guys participating in the mediation because we know that it was optional. You didn't have to. So, uh, we appreciate it, and just remember that honesty is a good policy to have, and remember that uh, it's important that each of you talk one at a time because if you start talking over each other, it gets confusing, and we can't understand, and we just want to make sure that it's just a safe environment that we can all hear each other and just really want to work out to get the, to get the best outcome possible. Okay. And picking up off of what Derek said, um, going back to the confidentiality, it's very important that you have no interruptions. So that includes no one coming into your room and disturbing you. Um, make sure that you have all cellular devices and any other electronics put away so then they're not distractions because that will hinder the mediation process. So I think Derek covered just about any everything. Um, Anything that comes up in the mediation that has to do with drugs, alcohol, weapons, self to your, uh, harm to yourself or harm to others, we have to let our superiors know. So just, just know that there are some things that we cannot keep confidential. So um, I think we went over everything. Do, do either of you have any questions that we need to establish? Um, well, well, what if we don't reach an agreement on everything? If if like what if everything doesn't work out we don't reach an agreement okay we can't figure everything out that may seem like a difficult thing but it, you can actually agree to disagree um you may come up with an agreement that may be you know you just don't talk to each other you just stay away from each other anything that would make it so that you would not have to have this problem occur again so not every solution has an agreement but we can try our best to help you guys come up with a solution. Does this confidentiality agreement include people who already know about the situation? Like my roommate already knows, so can I just tell her what happens? No, no, not at all. You cannot tell anyone. You cannot tell your, your family members. You can't tell your mom, can't tell your pets, even if they're not listening or they are, you can't tell anyone just because, you know, this is very confidential. It's important that we keep this to ourselves. Only Derek and I will know. And regarding with, the, you know, the bad drugs and stuff like that, that's the only reason why we would tell someone else. This will be staying all between the four of us. Okay. Okay, so if no one has any more questions, we can get started, and let's talk about the situation. So we heard that you had some issues involving social media. Um, Devin, would you like to start and tell us what happened in your perspective? Well, basically, we were in a group chat, and it was us and like six other people, and I felt like he just kept coming at me. Every time I would say something, he would just shoot me down. And I don't know why. And then another girl kicked me outside the group chat telling me that he had been, you know, talking to her about me, spreading rumors about me. 
you know, just really going at me. Then I get on Instagram and see he's commenting on people's pictures, talking about me even more. So I felt really attacked. Okay. And Sam, how do you feel about the situation? What do you think happened? Well, I mean, I wasn't necessarily attacking you, but I mean, we're not the best of friends or anything like that. And I mean, you you like to mess around with my friends, and I and I care about my friends. And it's not like you're the only innocent one here. It's okay. So, Sam, when you say mess around with my friends, can you give me a specific example of something that happened? Well, I'll just go ahead and say I don't know that everything is completely truthful and honest, but all I've been hearing lately from my friends about Devin here is, is that she likes to say a whole bunch of stuff and slander not only my name but some of my friends' names just because she thinks that she can and just because she thinks she has a right to. Uh, I don't necessarily disagree with her in particular but her herself and the way that she likes to talk about people does not very much appease me okay so what i hear you say is that you feel kind of threatened and offended by some of the stuff that you've heard her say and that you've heard other people heard her say so devin is there anything specific that you may have said that may have made sam feel this way Honestly, everything I say, I just say the truth. Some people can't handle it, and some people don't like to hear it, but. Okay. Derek, how do you feel? Um, well, what is your take on what's going on? What do you, you hear them say? Uh, Devin, this is actually uh, directed to you. You said that you feel that Sam shoots you down. Uh, you feel he was shooting you down. You say that uh, one of your biggest concerns was he took you out of the group chat and then he began to talk about you. Is that right? That's correct. Sam, uh, do you, did, is that true? Yeah. Well, I mean, the whole entire time that she's in the group chat, we're all trying to talk about the latest movie we want to go see. And yet she's one of talking about political debates and stuff and just trying to start arguments with people. So I was like, no, if Devin wants to be that way, then she can get out of the group chat. Okay. okay. Sam, I, Sam, this is directed to you. I hear you say that uh, you say that she messes with your friends, and that's something that bothers you, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm loyal to my friends, and if anyone were to say anything against my friends, I'd want to defend them, wouldn't you? Well, hey, hey, let's let's take a quick uh, pause, real quick. Um, hey, Sam and Devin, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put you guys on a brief pause for just five minutes. And me and uh, Aaron are going to talk really briefly. So you guys just hang tight for us, and uh, we'll be right back with you in one second, all right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let me put Devin on hold. Okay. Let me put Sam on hold. That. Okay. There you are. It's the two of you. Okay. All right, Derek, there's obviously something deeper going on here. There's just, it's not as shallow as, you know, she said some things, he said some things. I think there's something deeper going on here. What about you? I got you. I agree. I, I agree, too. It's definitely, uh, I see some, I saw some, a commonality in rumors that was going on. Yeah. When we go, when they get back into the conversation, because he did ask me a very pointed and direct question about it. You know, I, I believe he said, how did I feel about it? I want to make sure that I took a pause, just kind of create a little bit of space in it for a second. But when we go back in, I want to make sure that I let him under, let him know that it's not about my opinion or what yeah. I think. It's my job to be impartial. So that's yeah. kind of why I hope I heard I thought that the our pause it would make a good transition to you know. So but when we go back, I'll explain to him that I did hear your question and that uh, I, my job is to be impartial. I'm not, and I just want to make sure that you know. That the that effective communication goes, and it's not about what I think or how I feel. It's about it's about you guys working it out to the best outcome possible. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree 100. percent When you have those kind of questions, and you want to ask you personal questions about your opinion and stuff like that, it's very important that we take this time to just cool down and you know think about it because you can't. It's not really about us; it's about them. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you 100. percent Yeah, I just thought that pause just to be real, you know, because it was a very pointed question and uh, yeah. it kind of and it, and it did catch me. So <laughs> I need uh, so we're gonna get back in the game, but I'll make sure that I, I start off by addressing that, and then I'll just like I heard, I see that. You guys both have uh, rumors. Uh, you guys say that, uh, you know, Aaron, you say that 
that when he took you out of group chat and that you believe that things were said and then Sam, you feel the same thing. So we see that rumors play a big part in this. And uh, well, Sam, how do you feel about that? And then you can and then you can say, uh, Devin, how do you feel about that? And you can, then I can it'll be transferred back to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I really want to pull this out of them, you know, okay. and see what's really going on. Definitely. Well, I transition it back to you then after I say after I answer his question. All right. Okay. So shall I bring that back? Yes, that's fine. Okay. One second. So Sam and. Hey, hey, Sam, this right welcome here. Back. Hey, welcome back, guys. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that uh, brief pause, but uh, Sam, I did hear a question. Sorry, I was writing something really quick, but I want to let you know where, I, where we stand as mediators. My job is not to provide any type of, I'm not biased in any way, or it's not my job to put my personal opinion in this right here. Our job is just create an effective flow of a communication between you and Devin. It's not about what I think or I feel. It's about you guys working out your issue amongst each other. And our job is just, just facilitate and just help you guys, you know, just work it out and be, you know, and provide a safe environment so that y'all can work it out. Does that make sense, Sam? Yeah, that makes sense. I just meant that as a rhetorical question. Oh, I got you. I got you. We're good, man. And, uh, and, and Devin, I, and Devin and Sam, I hear that something that was common between both of y'all, y'all say that uh, rumors, and I saw that that was common in both of your, your sides of the story. Is that right, Sam? Yeah, definitely. And Devin, is that right? Do you say rumors were, is something that definitely troubled you in this situation? Is that right? Yes. Okay, okay. now I have a question for Sam. So Devin has spoken about being taken out of the group chat and how it, you know, she felt that you were talking about her. How do you think it made her feel, you know, if you were in her shoes? Well, I mean, I understand maybe taking her out of the group chat was a little harsh, but it seemed as though she was just being the pessimist of the situation. But I, I mean, it's the same way that I feel is, is that, we're both attacking each other in the same same senses is that we just keep on like I'll hear something like oh Devin said this and this about this person and then people will say oh well Sam said this about Devin and it's just like I don't know where it comes from and all I keep on hearing is stuff coming out of her and it's just I don't I don't want to start any arguments but then again I'm not up to fight and I just I don't want anything bad happening to my friends and if if that's if that's what she's bringing to the table, then I don't want it. And Devin, did you hear what he was saying? I did. And so, you know, hearing his perspective, you know, what does that make you think about the future moving forward, and you know, watching more about what you say about others? Oh, well, I guess it makes me put in perspective how I do tell the truth, but I guess I shouldn't be so blunt with the truth and just tell people. I don't want to say I should sugarcoat it, but I guess I should just tell everything I know about people, just, you know, when it's called for. So what I both hear you say is that you want each other to be respectful of your own opinions, you know, and be mindful of what you say to each other, because no one wants to hurt feelings here. I understand that this is probably one of those things where you were in the heat of the moment, you know, you didn't really mean what you were saying, but... You had said it anyway. So it, it, it both sounds to me like you, you know, want to work this out together. And uh, Sam, uh, I was going to start with you. If you could say anything to Devin right now as far as your, this situation and resolving it, uh, what would be one thing that you, that you would want to communicate to Devin? How about you tell her uh, what that is? Well, I mean – we don't necessarily know each other like the back of each other's hands, but you know, as I am a person, I don't like confrontation or uh, even disagreeing with people, but I just, I, I care a lot about my friends and I don't want them to get harassed or anything like that. I, I don't necessarily know that's the stuff that you're saying. It could be anyone saying that cause you know how school works, but it's just, I, I just want, to I just want things to be peaceful and when things aren't peaceful I feel as though I need to be a mediator in between everything so that people don't have to deal with their own problems and I don't want anything against you I just don't want anything negative from people that I hardly know that could start rumors about me about for no reason and I haven't said anything against you 
other than when we were in the chat. But that's a pretty much it. I'm not. I don't want any trouble with you or anything like that. I just don't want anything to go on between either you and I, or you and my friends, or between your friends and my friends. I just, I want peace, and I don't want there to be so much disagreement. But I realize I was harsh taking you out on the group chat, and I and I should have just talked to you separately. But it didn't work out that way because, like you said, we are in the heat of the moment. So I just took you out, and I. I guess I shouldn't have done that. And Devin, how do you feel about uh, what Sam has said? And what if you could tell Sam one thing on top of you know what he's saying? What, what would you say to him? How, what, how do you feel about what he said? And what would you like to communicate back to him? Well, I guess from what he's saying, I really do see that he really cares about his friends. And I can understand that 100%. Because I care about my friends, too. And I never really meant to be attacking people's friends or to be seen as attacking people's friends. Normally, when people, like, one of the biggest traits they like in people is honesty. And I thought I was just giving people honesty. But I didn't realize it was so blunt and harsh honesty. So I guess what I can say to you is that I really didn't mean to, for, to make you feel this way about me or about your friends. I really had the best interest at heart. It just started coming out the wrong way. And you know, once you get going with stuff, you start building your reputation. It's hard to backtrack. You have to save face. So I just had to keep on. But I, I can definitely see a change coming in me with that. I appreciate that. Um, this is good that we can have an open dialogue between you two because you know this means that you are closer to coming to a solution. So whenever Sam was talking, we heard him talk about some of his wants and some of his needs that he needs from you. So, Devin, what would you say you would want or need from Sam in return? I guess really my only want is forgiveness, you know. Um, really just being comfortable with me around his friends will come in time. I can't really ask for him forced comfortableness, you know. But I guess I really just want him to forgive me. And just, you know, not look past, look past what I've done and really just be positive around me. And Sam, how do you feel about that? I feel like that's the perfect solution, honestly, if we can both reach a mutual ground as to where we're just not mean to each other anymore, then everything would work fine and we wouldn't have a single problem anymore. So I, 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 I agree with that. Okay, so now it looks like we're coming to a solution and that we both are clear on what we want and what we need. So Derek and I will help you um, draft up this, um, this agreement. So then we have a physical evidence of what you have both said that you want and need. So then whenever we come and check up on you in about a week or so time, you can make sure that you are carrying out your written part of the agreement. Well, what if Devin doesn't want to carry out the agreement and she keeps on slandering my name and my friend's name? I mean, it's just, I'm just curious. What if she doesn't hold up her end of the bargain? It's well, oh, Derek, you want to you wanna answer his question? You can answer his question. Oh, sorry, Aaron. Thanks. Uh, in situations like this right here, the, the one of the rules is that you only are responsible for your end of it. You're not responsible for Devin's end of it, but she's responsible for her end of the agreement. And uh, in a little while, when me and uh, Aaron help you guys draft what you're going to agree to, that you have to understand, Sam, that it's just you just you're just responsible for your part. And we can uh, we hope that the that the solution it just works out, uh, you know, perfectly. But sometime. Uh, Sometimes, you know, the, sometimes you just got to agree to disagree. And it seems like right now we're on pretty good ground. And uh, I believe that, you know, we're, we're pretty – you guys both have an understanding of each other. But just know that it's up to you to hold out your part of the agreement. And it's up to – and it's Devin's responsibility alone to hold up her end. Does that make sense, Sam? That makes sense. I understand. Okay. And also, whenever you agree to do this mediation process, you agree to everything. You agree to be 100%. You agree to follow it all the way through, and that includes the agreement and, you know, the solution at the end. So agreeing to the mediation means agreeing to do your part of the agreement. So, you know, and if anything were to happen in between you two, you know, if – you were to both, you know, heard rumors about each other. You have evidence that, you know, you're talking about each other again. We can always come back and do another session, and, you know, and find out another agreement that will work better this time 
for next time and you know for anything that may happen so just know well, the possibilities something that i can also suggest is is that instead of letting it go through everyone devin you and i should just you know it, you know, not a long conversation. We don't have to be friends or anything like that. But just to make sure, just be like, if I ever were to come to you, you can come to me as well. Just be like, hey, did you say this? And of course not. I probably wouldn't say it because I don't, I don't, like I said, I don't want any confrontation. But you can come to me and ask. But you just know that I, I don't want any more confrontation. I just want a smooth, even, mutual ground with you. Okay. I can agree with that. And, you know, of course, when we come to our little meetings, if we do need to come to one, you know. Just honestly, one hundred percent, you know, just like in here. So okay, yeah, that's very big of you, Sam, to say that you would personally go to to Devin and ask her about that because you don't usually get that in most cases. You well, know, it's very I don't, I don't want any problems. I, I just want everything to be, you know, mutual. And I, I don't. Well, I didn't want any problems in the beginning. So if we could nip it in the bud and just make sure that neither of us are doing either of the slandering, making rumors or whatnot, then I think we would have a I think we'd have a great working agreement. Okay, that's good. I'm going to pull up the um, agreement sheet and I will share that with you both. So this is an interactive so we can fill out the names of the disputants. So, Sam, what grade are you in? 11th. And Devin? 11. Do either of you object to having, you know, your race? No. All no. right. So, Sam, in your words, what would you say the main conflict was? Just the main con conflict was that I had heard that her friends and Devin herself were saying stuff about me and my friends, and I didn't like that. And Devin? Um, I would just say Sam took things well. I felt Sam was starting things by kind of taking me out of the group chat, excluding me from people, and then I began to hear news about me. Bear with me. <laughs> All right. To prevent rumors, we will tell others that we solved your problem in the mediation. So that basically means that whenever people come up to you in school and they say, hey, yo, we heard that you guys, you know, had mediation. Tell me all the, all the details. I want to know all about it. Just say, look, we had the mediation. It went how it was supposed to go. And that's all you need to know. You know, make sure that no one else finds out because this, this will be kept confidential. So do you both agree to do that? Definitely. Yes. And again, referring to the confidentiality, we do know that, you know, it will be confidential. So we understand that the mediation sense, uh, sessions are confidential and should not be discussed with our peers. We both agree. Yes. And like we said earlier, if something was to arise again and something were to happen, you can see that we will you know, agree to have another mediation in the future and have the problem solved. Hopefully we won't have another problem. All right. Okay, so now we both agree to do these 
terms and we both agreed to carry out our parts of the agreement? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now that we have our confirmation of the agreement, we both know that Sam, you agree to, you know, not start anything. You agree to keep your own opinions and be respectful of Devin and her opinions and, you know, remain loyal to your friends and protect them. And Devin, you said that you agree to, you know, be wary of what you say, you know, think more about the outcome and how it will affect others and, you know, to be respectful of Sam and his opinions and his friends. And I won't take everything so seriously. I just, it's easy to take stuff out of context when you're constant, when you feel you're constantly being attacked by people. Yeah, I can understand. Now, Derek, do you have anything else you would like to add? Uh, I think we're, we're pretty good. I just wanted to say, uh, Sam and Devin, uh, thanks so much for participating in this mediation because of course, you know that it was optional and I hope that we're able to help, you know, facilitate a, a, a good ending that y'all can move forward in the future and make it isn't just a little bit easier. So we, we just want to say thank you for participating, uh, in the mediation and we'll be actually emailing you guys the, the form that we just typed up the agreement so that y'all, in case you ever wanted to, you know, keep it as a, hard copy or go back and refer to it in the, in the event that you guys just want to look over it. We'll make sure that you have that in your possession as well. But besides that, we really do appreciate y'all. Y'all did a great job. We appreciate nobody, you know, interrupting each other and not using mm -hmm. that language. You guys are really awesome. So uh, we really do appreciate y'all. Yes. No thank problem. you so much. It's very mature that you guys can both come here and want to work things out like adults. So yes, this is very good. Absolutely. If there's nothing else, then I guess we can wrap this up and, you know, hopefully you both have a lovely day and, you know, we will hopefully not see you again. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. Hopefully not. All right, yeah. Sam, Devin, y'all have All a great right. day. See y'all later. Thank you. All right, great. Alexandria, can you come, can you come back on? There you are. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Woo. Hey. Hi. <laughs> All right. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm Good gonna... job. Good job, Devin. Good job, everybody. So I can see by the verbal response and by the big smiles, I'm seeing that that was a tough one and you felt about how it went, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. It got really uh, dark in here because yeah. it's going to rain. <laughs> <laughs> Other difficulties. <laughs> yeah, sorry. My cat kept on trying to. Like, my cat crawled on my lap like thirteen times, and I was like, "I'm doing something." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. So I, I wasn't with you on on Monday, but I went back and I watched um, all the previous simulations, including the ones on Monday, and. And so I got to see your excellent work last week, Sam, as well, even though I wasn't um, oh, physically you. with you. Thank you. Um, but Aaron, Derek, and Devin, you know, I've seen you mediate a few times on this forum now, and I encourage you to go back and look at those first simulations because oh. you have grown <laughs> so much. Um, and, I, and I can see it in your confidence, and I can see it in the, in the way you handle the online world as we're, as we're doing this. Um, and I hope you realize how, how incredible that is, how much you've grown, and the fact that you're here and you want to get better. Um, that's, that's all on you, right? This is optional for you. As, as you <laughs> encourage your, it, this is optional. You're choosing to work on this skill. Um, and so I really want to make sure you realize how awesome you are for doing that. Um, Thank you. So let's get into today's mediation. How did you guys think it went? Let's start with our co-mediators, Aaron and Derek, who's first time working together. And Aaron. Um, co um, I actually found it pretty difficult only because, you know, um, Devin and I had spoken before this about what we were going to do. And I was like, oh. I have to like change my whole perspective and everything. Cause I was about to ready to get into it. But then I was like, Oh man, I have to mediate. So and yeah. it was great working with Derek because, you know, I really tried to bounce off of him since it is our first time, you know, working together. So 
I feel like I didn't mean to interrupt you a couple times. Oh. <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, I'm just glad that we, it, it was good. It was really good. You know, and I, I, I think, and Aaron, I think it was, I think it was great. I just love the way you just, I love the flow of the way you kept it going. Oh, you're very thorough. And I love this, especially in the beginning. And when it came down to the rules, I had them written down and uh, you, you pretty much dotted eyes. And uh, I think we piggybacked off each other real good. I know that one time when I kind of interrupted you, <laughs> I, it, it wasn't planned. I mean, I should have waited for you. I mean, you could have turned it over to me, but it was like, I kind of, but I loved, I think it was smooth way, you know, we apologize. You say, yeah, let's keep it moving. We didn't take, we didn't harp on or nothing to make this scene. Yeah. But I think yeah. it was really good. And it was, you know, good for our first mediation together. I think it was, I think it, it went all right. And it's all yeah. right. I, I think everything went well. They, you know, it was good overall. Yeah. I also thought it was kind of difficult because of the topic, you know, social media. Yeah. You can't, I tried to, you know, ask for suspe specific examples because, you know, he said, she said is really, really hard to work with if you don't have any proof, you know, what did he say? What did she say? Because that also helps whenever you ask them, you know, how does it feel whenever they said this and this and this? And so, yeah, I found that kind of difficult. But, you know, I try, you know, work with it the best <laughs> I could. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Well, that was an excellent moment that you had in it. It was written, written in my notes is when you had them kind of open up the conversation of, hey, what's what's the problem? They were giving you very vague answers. That was a cue yeah. to you. Hey, it's not really about this group text, right? It's about mm -hmm. something else. And you talked about it later on your on your one to one of, hey, there's something deeper here. So by having him give an example of what does that mean, um, I have exactly what you said, but you, you said something of, well, give me an example of when you say messing around, right? When you say mm -hmm. messing around, what does that mean? That's when he started using those descriptive words and you were able to hear he was hurt and he was threatened. Um, yeah. So that was a great moment that you, you capitalized on to really get to the heart of the problem. All right, let's hear from our disputants real quick. How did you guys feel in it? How did the mediators make you feel? Uh, I think um, even though it was Aaron and Derek's first time working together, it didn't seem like it. And I was, it really impressed me. I've done a lot of mediations. I think I did one, or maybe two with Derek a long time ago. But they really did work well together. And I think it was harder for Aaron, actually. <laughs> like you said, we had just talked about what we did. <laughs> And so we didn't tell like Derek because we didn't think they were gonna know. So we really like went through everything, and then I was like, "Well, just pretend you don't know." <laughs> yes. <laughs> but other than that, I really do think like they made us feel really nice at the end. You know, just like, "Hey, we're still human beings, so you know, have a good day." Outside of this, um, just like if anything happens, you can always come back to us. We're gonna be follow up. We're gonna send the agreement, which is really important that everybody has their own copy of the agreement. So like Sam was saying, if something were to come up again, then we could use that. It's like, hey, we have the agreement right here, so let's look at this before we have to go back to the mediators. So I think they did really good. I was pretty impressed. So what I'm hearing you say is that, you know, you know, Giuseppe told us you were sent here by the principal and you didn't know, you know, what what was gonna happen here. You didn't feel in trouble. You felt valued and cared about within the process. Right, I really thought it, was, it wasn't a punishment. It didn't feel like they were making it a punishment, so that was good. Very cool. How about you, Sam? How did you feel? Okay, you well, just to start out, guys, honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, uh, I got asked <laughs> to do this. But, like, and so, like, I have no idea except for an email that says, what's the, the problem, social media? And I'm just like, okay. But, okay, to begin with, Aaron and Derek, you guys need your PhDs like hands. <laughs> the professionalism was immense. I was so like seriously proud of you guys while I was like talking about these imaginary problems that I have. <laughs> you guys, you both of you are amazing. And Devin, like, I don't know how we did that, but like everything you said worked off what I did. And it was you just like everything you said. Plus, Aaron and Derek, as well as making everything flow easily. It was, it was almost as though, like, I didn't, like, it was like I, the book was writing itself in front of me. And yeah. it just, it was very easy, very, very professional. And it felt as though it was a privilege that, like, you know, I didn't have to do this. But, you know, thank you for coming to mediation. Thank you for talking about your problems, because I didn't have to. But then it felt as though it was a privilege that, because I got the chance to express myself and be able to say, well, hey, you know, 
this has happened, but I want to fix it. And that's what I really appreciate about it because I have no idea what we were doing to begin with, but I really like this now. So, yeah. And I, I feel, well, Sam, you were excellent. Yeah. Come on, ahead, Aaron. I was going to let Devin go if she wants oh. to. Oh, okay. Well, like, just real quick to bounce off what Sam said. Um, I think that's the whole point of mediation in the first place. Because what Aaron and Derek did, which is really, I think it was great. I, I usually don't let people do this because they're too angry. But they really just let us say what we wanted to say. Mm -hmm. I think that's the whole point of mediation. It's like, hey, we're not going to talk about anything. We're not going to tell anybody. But, hey, you guys are in this room. Say exactly what you want to say to the other person without judgment. Like, I was like, I feel like I have to say face. A lot of people don't want to say that. But with them not judging, no talking about it, it's just going to stay in the room. A lot of people feel like they can actually say what they need to say. So I think that was really great with Derek did. So. And I was going to say, going off of what Sam said, you know, it's really hard whenever you have such a big topic and, you know, you're trying to come up with these imaginary problems. I think that's where the intake form comes in, because once you have it up on the screen and you can see exactly what the people said, it helps you so much, like, so much better so you have an actual understanding of what really went went down. Because, you know, if you had a real intake problem, just say we fought over social media, that doesn't help you at all. So, you know, it's, it's very very useful and I understand your pain Sam I understand <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you guys did amazing now overall you guys did amazing everyone thank you so I heard a lot of really good things come up in what you all just said first of all going to speaking to what Sam and Dad were saying about how they felt is that you guys set up a very positive environment Sam said it was a privilege not a punishment right and mm -hmm. they felt valued in, in the process they felt like you were there for them um and they weren't being punished it was it was a positive healing experience which i think is really important very and easy. knowing that we're on an online what was that it's just very easy everything flew like was flowing very easily it didn't ever take a chance to get awkward or anything you know which is kind of interesting on the online environment we've talked about that we're not feeling each other's presence in the room but it flowed. You were able to communicate to each other. You were able to create that safe space as if you were sharing one room, um, which I think is a really powerful skill and it might not be as easy for others. So know that that's something that you're working with and that's a talent you have to make them feel a part of a, a healing environment, even though they're sitting how many miles away in their own, in their own space. Um, so that, that was a, a feedback I had for you as well. So I'll talk, let's kind of start at the top so we know where we're at. Um, Aaron, right at the top, you had such a positive, you, you just in general have such a positive light and energy. And the first things you said were just like, hey, we're happy to be here. This is a positive thing. Let's talk about what's going to happen right now. And it set the floor for that positive environment we've been talking about. And you emphasized in that. The confidentiality. Hey, this is just between us. We want to be honest. So let's make sure that there's no video recording, no one in the room. It was a really good reminder. And then you had talking about our transitions with co mediators who haven't worked together. It was very <laughs> natural. Go, hey, I'm going to have Derek talk about this. And it didn't feel like um, stilted or unnatural or unpracticed. It was going to take over. And Derek, you picked it up awesome. Um, it was a natural transition. And what I like you, that you emphasized in the beginning was not being biased and being honest. And that came back to, as being really important in the mediation, huh? Yeah, um, it is, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so the fact that you, right from the get-go, hey, we're non-biased, we're not about this, we're here for you. Again, sets that stage for what we've been talking about. Sweet. And that whole intro, what you get together, equaled that safe environment. Um, and that was before anyone said anything. So think about what you did in, you know, what, three or, three or four minutes, maybe, tops. Um, then let's get to the actual dispute, right? So what happened was the first thing we said. Um, and again, Sam, excellent job with vague social media. What does that mean? You guys came up with, with your dispute. And Aaron...
I have to I have to decode my notes. You guys talk so fast. <laughs> I'm trying. To... I'm sorry. I'm like right. I really well, at don't the worry. <laughs> Go ahead. I was going to say, at the beginning, I was just trying to make sure I said everything because I didn't want to forget. So, like, I was, because I know I forgot a couple times. So, I was just like, every single rule, let's get this down on the floor first, and then we can talk more about it. Yeah, kind of lay down the ground rules. Okay, now let's get into the meat of it. Um, what, what I was trying to decode was Devin and Sam asked you guys really good questions off the beginning talking about okay what happens if we don't reach an agreement and uh, Aaron I believe you were the one who took it you very gracefully answered that kind of tough question of hey we want to focus on on keeping this safe so if we didn't reach an agreement we're gonna make sure that going outside of this we're gonna be safe we're gonna you know either not talk to each other until we have another mediation make sure we're not violent we're gonna keep it safe for both of you even if we don't reach an agreement today but then focusing on well then we would see what else we could do right mm -hmm. I liked that emphasis it was an excellent very graceful response to that kind of tough question and they, they gave you a lot of tough questions. They worked you this time, huh? Yeah, but I love their um, questions. I'm glad that they, you know, were interactive and just weren't like, we're just like, getting an earful. They actually really <laughs> wanted to know. So I'm, I like those kind of questions. Yeah, you could tell they were invested in the process. If I'm going to be open and honest. I want to make sure that other person is. And you were able to reassure them both that this is just about you and how this is going to help it's not about who's outside that door. And I think that made them more, more invested. How did you guys feel about how they answered your questions, Sam and Devin? I felt honestly that they were giving us really good answers. Not quite, but good answers, of course. I mean, like the unopinionated, unopinionated mediation answers, but still like legitimate answers, not just like the textbook answers. Like when Derek was addressing um, Sam, when he asked like, what did you want to do that to? Or how would you feel if you, something like this happened to your friend? He did, did gave him an answer like, hey, I'm not here to give you my opinion. I'm here to try to help you with your issue. And I'm really not going to be taking sides. So I thought that was a really good answer in that tight situation, so. How about you, Sam? How did you feel about how they answered your questions? Because you posed some really hard balls for them. Well, the thing that I really liked about them was is that they weren't specific enough as to where it's like, okay, you can't do this. It was like, it was like, okay, well, we don't want you to do this because if you do that, that means that they get to do it too, and you wouldn't like that, would you? And also, Derek, same thing. I really liked how you took the advantage of that moment to be able to take the the question that I'd said. Like, I was like. Wouldn't you? And you were like, actually, no, because this isn't my problem. This is your problem. So, <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's Even though for a simulation, I was like, hey. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Um, and, and let's fast forward. We'll, we'll get back to, to the top half. But let's fast forward to that moment because De Devin and Sam, you both hit on it. And that was a really tense moment because, remember, in Sam's character he was being very defensive and protective of his friends he was feeling very threatened and hurt we had heard him say those words and he threw that question at you Derek well you know I was I was protecting my friends what would you do and you went okay we're gonna we're gonna take a break for a second we're gonna you know Aaron and I are gonna talk and I thought that was an excellent moment for both of them to be able to cool down for Sam to have a moment to cool down and for you guys to kind of conference and go, hey, something else is going on, right? It's not about this group. How did that moment work for you, Derek? What was your process? How did you choose that? Well, to be honest with you, uh, the question, uh, of course, I knew from the get-go that I'm not supposed to be biased, but just to, the way that it was just so, he's very pointed and it was so sharp. I thought that, you know, it, that break could give me a second, you know, to let, you know, kind of let it defuse me. Then I can talk to Aaron like, whoa, that kind of, that was, that was, that was kind of, oh, as a, that was my little building, growing moment. So I got a chance to give it a second to address it, but also I didn't want to just act, because at first I was like, whoa, that was kind of, all right, let me just stop a minute and regroup. Then I'll come back and address it as if I, because I mean, I knew his question, but I wanted him to understand. I just think it transitioned you. I think that it was going to, in my head, I knew it was going to 
I, I figured that it would transition better if I took that break. Then came back and addressed this question head on the way, you know, non-biased. Because at first it kind of threw me off. I wouldn't expect him to be as pointed to me like that, you know. So, I mean, it kind of, it, it was a learning curve for me too. Uh, so I took advantage of that moment to kind of get it, reel it back in and take advantage of that pause. I think it was a really good moment. And I enjoyed seeing you guys conference um, without the disputants there and, and see how you chose to use that moment. Erin, how did you feel about that little one-on-one -on -one conference? <laughs> um, to be honest, I actually have forgotten that we were supposed to take a pause. So <laughs> as, soon as, yeah. as soon as he said, let's take a pause, I was like, oh, yes, let's just do that right now. <laughs> I was like, let's take the initiative because I really did. Like, I would think so much about what – I wanted to do and what I wanted to say I kind of a couple things you know go out my brain so yes thank you Derek thank you for taking the pause because that was awesome all right and that's why we have a team right yeah Absolutely. high five <laughs> so excellent job brilliant response to that moment um and and it definitely orchestrated sort of a good moment for everyone in there. Everyone kind of got to take a break before we came back in. Um, and they got kind of moving up to the top when we're just sort of getting into the problem. Um, Aaron, you're really good at using these phrases. Like, so what I'm hearing you say is, and Sam didn't give you the word hurt and threatened. It was what you heard him say in, mm -hmm. in the words that he chose. And Sam, how did you feel about that? Because I saw a look on your face um, that that responded to it. So how did you respond when Aaron said, um, "What I heard, what I'm hearing you say is that you feel hurt"? Well, it was just because the whole entire time, like I got into character, I was like, "All right, I'm mad because she's saying stuff about my friends," and so. I got into this character, and then when she finally wants to appeal on whatever I'm saying, like, you know, how does that make you feel? I'm like, well, you know, like, now that I can finally talk to somebody about it and actually appeal on my side, not my and my friend's side, it allows me to alleviate myself the tensions that I have in my mind. And so I'm tense about this whole thing because I don't really want to be here in my character. And then I get, to start, I get to start talking about it a little bit, and that's what helps me smooth out a little bit, not be so – aggressive defensively and just it, it just kind of like helped everything pan out as well because i got to speak about what i wanted to say and i enjoyed it awesome so what i'm hearing you say a little bit in there too is that you became a person right you weren't the protector of your friends in that moment it was hey this is about you yeah awesome and and you did that several times throughout the mediation period is really hitting that that feeling button how are you feeling right now how is Devin feeling right now and being able to, to kind of humanize the moment um even though they were talking about something very very heated so awesome awesome responses and awesome ways of phrasing what they were thinking. both of you Garrett you did it did it very well as well um and then, okay, so jumping back, we're just, uh, we had so many good things happen in this one. I want to make sure we hit them all. After we took that little break, you were able to address his question in saying no bias, but then you were also able to say, here's what I'm seeing in this moment. Although you haven't said it yet, this is the common playing field. Um, and you talked a little bit about it on your one-to-one of having the common theme of, of rumors. Right. Um, uh, does anybody hear that? Like, yeah. you guys hear yeah. some kind of noise? Okay, I thought it was just me. <laughs> like airplanes, like, driving by. I don't know. Around. Yeah. It's, it's something, like, rumbling. Like, like really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I don't know where it's going from, so. Uh, oh, I know, I hear it. It's a little distracting, isn't it? It's kind of like a little bit. I was going yeah. to say, Derek, every time you would touch the papers, <laughs> I would try not to laugh because it was so funny. Every time. <laughs> you said every time I do what? You touch the papers. Like you were like crumbling papers or rustling papers. I'm professional. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at all these papers. <laughs> 
Was the mic really that sensitive? Oh man, I yeah. heard everything. Yes, it was like whoosh, 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 like everywhere. Oh, wow. I'm glad you said that because I didn't know that. I, I I didn't know that it was that sensitive. Because I was talking, I was thinking, what is he doing? Like, <laughs> okay. I wrote a lot of I wrote a lot of notes. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah. So that's something good to note is that if you have anything in your area, how it could could impact um, yeah. how people are heard. So that might be even something you might want to discuss. Of going, you know. Hey, uh, we don't want to talk at the same time because it's hard to hear, but make sure like everything around your area is quiet so we can really be in the moment. Um, because I, I think there was a few moments we're hearing feedback just from life, right? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. minimizing it as much as possible. Did y'all hear okay. my friend screaming? I don't know why. I was, yeah, I was like, oh God, oh God, oh God. Because he's yelling about something, and I'm like, I got to go close the door. So when you guys put me on hold, I ran across the room. And closed the door. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was like, why are you screaming? Behind the scenes stories. All right, so let's jump back, back into the mediation now that we've kind of solved the noise problem. Um, Aaron, you did a really good job, and it's something we've discussed before when we're talking about. Um, well, she did this, he did that. You, you, let, um, uh, you let Sam have his moment of this is what I'm feeling, and then you went to Devin. Okay, so, so Devin, how do you think Sam feels right now, or how did that make Sam feel? And you, you had both of them take the other person's perspective. Of, okay, how are they feeling, and why are they feeling that way? Which which is a good thing and a good moment to have. And Derek, you bounced right off of, of Aaron in that moment. And you just had some really good intuition moments, I think. When you had them, let's see, oh, when you asked them, um, if there's anything you, you could communicate to Devin or if there's anything you can communicate to Sam, what would it be? Right, and you let them have that moment together, and you both took a step back. How did that work for you, Derek? Why did you decide to do it right then, and what made you think of that? Well, I remember from the last mediation, I didn't, I didn't make the Monday, but I remember you said that it's really good when they can talk, and it, I believe that transcends a lot of things when they talk it out themselves. So I thought I saw a good opportunity because they both both expressed some things, and Devin expressed this, and. It, that Sam expressed that, so it was good. I think it was a safe, we, we, we got the environment safe enough to where, you know, we can kind of just step back and observe. That way me and Aaron can be like, okay, I see this, I hear this, and then we can come back in. Then it's kind of like they're building a relationship by physically talking to each other. But I remember I took that from last mediation, and you said that it's good to create dialogue between them. Yeah. Excellent. How did you guys feel, Devin and Sam, having to kind of communicate directly to the person even though we're online? Um, and how did you feel in that moment? Well, I don't know. I, I still, Sam, can you hear Yeah, I can hear It still felt pretty intense, but I think they handled it pretty well. Even though it was online, I could still feel like... I could still feel Sam's intensity towards me, but at the same time, I felt like both the mediators, I know my screen's like probably not even right, but both the mediators are still doing the, um, you know, calm, keeping everything cool and level, and not really like blowing up when they hear something interesting come out, or like yeah. when the situation turns, takes a turn, they didn't really like, you didn't see any facial expression. So I really didn't feel like, even though it was online, I could still feel them and feel everybody's like emotions about the situation pretty well. Um, the, the moment that you, you guys were like, okay, well, if you had anything to say to them, what would you say? It was just kind of like, I didn't expect that. Yeah. Well, okay. And then I thought about it for a second and I was like, well, what's the easiest way to resolve this into a resolution as to where both of us can find a mutual ground of agreement. And it's just that kind of like swept the whole entire floor of the problem. Cause there really isn't a problem if we figure out how to solve it ourselves. And I, and I really, and I, I, that was a very strong point in the whole mediation. It was a very poignant moment. And I think a, a lot of it got resolved right there in what they were saying directly to each other. 
And then Aaron, you reinforced the moment very well. As soon as they kind of have that um, understanding, you you said, um, it's great that we can have this open and honest discussion. And we talked about our wants and needs. So let's make sure we, we're very clear on what our wants and needs are. So you would reinforce that, hey, we're doing something very cool here. We're having an open and honest discussion. And didn't it feel good? Now let's move forward and, and take some action and make sure we're going to resolve from it. Yeah, I just thought that was really important because, you know, people will hold grudges and have emotions that they, you know, they want to talk out. But, you know, if no one, you know, prompts them to, they'll just hold it all in. So, Derek, that was really good with, you know, asking them, you know, what would you say? Because it forced them to actually talk about their feelings, you know, and what they wanted and needed from each other without the, without us having to say, look, what do you need? What would you like us to hear, basically? that right. you need from this person and it allows them to say it in their own words. It was, it was, you know, that's part of the process is getting those wants and needs so we can put it into a solution. But it was a really elegant way of doing it. It was a natural way where they didn't feel like you were directing them. It was them talking to each other. Um, right. And you guys set a really good model for them in the beginning. When I was talking about, you know, and, and I'm going to have Derek say this. And then, um, Derek, you kind of threw it back to Aaron. Aaron's going to talk to you about this. In those first few moments, you gave them a really good model of what it's like to talk to each other in this forum um, and how to be polite and how to take your turn. And I think I could see them kind of following your lead. How about you guys? Do you think they, um, they set a good example for you in the beginning? Did you take that into consideration at all? Disputants, Devin and uh, Sam. I felt as though they were kind of like news reporters because they got to take, well, like the the shuffling off of each other was just like, and Aaron and Derek and this, <laughs> and everything was just one fluid motion. But it was like it was kind of like as though there was only one frame, one person could fit in the frame. So that, like, even if we did accidentally interrupt each other, we were just like, oh, okay, you got to be respectful. So, and I, and I did, a, I did like that. It felt as though, like, even though it was a simulation, it felt as though it was a real mediation just because everything was so administered and respected as well. And I, and I enjoyed that. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, I really think that what, what Derek did was really important, just letting everybody speak because this was a situation where you could tell there were underlying feelings and underlying causes and issues. And a mediator can only go so deep and see somebody's issue before they just like stop sharing. I think it's just human nature. Even though you agree to share, you agree to be like, I think it's just human nature to stop. So I feel like when Derek was like, hey, anything you want to say, Devin, go ahead and do right now. That was really important. And I also feel like what Sam was saying too, that everything was just falling. They were still very professional. But it was really just flowing in between only one person talking at a time. And I don't even think we had a situation where we actually were talking at the same time. Well, Aaron and Derek did, but that stopped really quick because you really can't hear anybody else. <laughs> yeah, so, totally. Um, it's not even like disrespect. It's like you really can't hear. So I think that was, that was really good. Very cool. All right, and getting to the end of the mediation, we've, we've kind of set our wants and needs. We're going to go to a solution. Um, we had a really good question about, hey, what happens if we don't, if she doesn't hold up her end of the agreement or he doesn't hold up her end? Um, Derek, I really liked your response. Hey, this is about you, right? It's about, it's about what you're accountable for and what you're doing. And if we need to, we'll come back and figure out a solution that meets your needs. But for now, the agreement's all about what you do to uphold it. And I like that that emphasized his own responsibility to the process, not about hers. Because um, he was the one asking the question. So excellent job. We've talked about how well you handled their questions, but I wanted to reinforce that. How did the contract go, you guys? How did you feel about that form? I I really was trying to, you know, fill it out based on what was, you know, already there because you know it's it was the first time so it's kind of like a rough draft and I just want to basically you know work on it because you can always perfect it as you go on so it's, it's, it's just more of you know let's just hit these bullet points and then we'll take it from there 
and I kind of wish that I would have typed out the agreement more because I know we said it, but we didn't physically word it out. And that was kind of like an error on my part. So I take responsibility. So, um, yeah, that's just something we would have to work on a little bit. Yeah. This is for practice, right? This is why we're here. We're getting better as it goes. I thought for the first go it went really well. How did you think it went, Derek? Well, I think I think she I think she did really well when she pulled the document up and everybody was able to visually see it. I think uh, I think the way I, I actually I thought it was really well, especially for you know it, it, it pretty much it it said what Sam's issue was and it, and I love the way she I mean she was very direct about what Sam said. This is what Sam said. This is what Devin said, but this is what we can agree on. So I do like the way she took, I mean, she kept their perspective versus us, you know, because, you know, sometimes we kind of word a little bit different. She said exactly what Sam said and the issue with Sam, the conflict, and exactly what Devin's conflict was from their perspective. I think it made it more personal when she wrote exactly from their perspective versus rewording it to our perspective to make it look good for them, if that makes sense. Alexandria. Yes. When you're done... I'd like to hear from uh, Cindy and Karen as well about the form because this was the first time that uh, we used it. So, okay. Uh, yeah, just uh, awesome. let, me, let me know when you're done. Okay. All right. So I have, um, and again, excellent. I have a couple of more questions, but again, an excellent closure on, um, on it. it. We hit it off on a, po a positive note. You re-emphasize the fact that um, it was voluntary, right? They didn't have to be there and that they worked it out and that it was a good positive experience. So I think you really ended it on that positive note. Um, I have one question um, for you kind of going forward. I've gotten to work with you a bit as I talk, talked about and I've seen how you grown so much and I get to see you one more time next Wednesday. So I would like you to think for a minute about what your strength as a mediator is and what is one area of growth that you want to work on that you've identified. So I can write it down and the next time I work with you I can really focus in on those things that you want to work on. So take a minute. I know that's a big question. And then anyone who's ready, let me know. Tuffy, right? What is your strength and what is your area of growth? I think I go ahead and just get the ball rolling. I think my strength will probably be to uh, try and be intentional about wanting to know what the underlying problem is. My intent is really to find out what is the issue. Why does this person feel this way? Why did this dispute get that far? I'm very intentional about it. So I'm very, I hone my senses to look for certain words. I feel attacked. I heard a common, a common word was attacked and things of that nature. That's my strength as I'm, I, we're, you know, I'm active in trying to point those clues out. I would say my weakness will probably be that, uh, you know, just, just becoming more, I mean, more, of course, I've done mediations in the past, but becoming more, familiar with it and then also get an opportunity to because you know, i mean like sam sam was very pointed about some things and i mean and it required a it required a response that was i mean i, I didn't want to i don't i mean my response could easily shut the whole mediation down and, and make him go into a zone where I, he doesn't feel comfortable anymore he doesn't feel confident in my ability to help him facilitate this so, i mean I, my weakness would probably be uh making sure that you know making sure that i understanding the big picture better and uh, making sure that I get the, the details to make the big picture. That makes sense. That'll be my, I believe that would be my weakness is trying to, you know, being more fluent and, uh, and being responding to hard questions. Maybe it's a matter of just making a list of the hard questions and this is how I should respond. And this is what this should look like. And, and, you know, I think that'll be my weakness responding to the questions. That's a little bit more that could turn the person off from the mediation. And, uh, and making I'm making sure that I'm very tactful with my response, but also speaking from a level of training and confidence. Well, if I may, something that I can point out as well as what you were just talking about as your weakness was is that when you when you said that it wasn't necessarily your opinion because this wasn't your problem, this wasn't your confrontation or mediation, you're just a mediator in the mediation, that you said that wasn't your problem, I was like, okay. And then I was like, well, when I said I re retorted with, it was a um, – 
Oh man, the word. Um, it was a rhetorical question. You said, "Oh, okay, I I totally understand." Like, no need to feel. It like made me feel easier about the situation as well, just because you were like, "I understand." Yeah, everything's cool. And just by you doing that, made the extra effort for me to feel more comfortable with talking and more like feeling as though I need to be less aggressive on my defense for my friends and myself. Gotcha. Gotcha. So what I'm hearing you say is just being a little bit more confident in the situation and coming from practice. Right. Is that a good yes. summation of what, of your area of growth? Right. That's what we're here for. So you're perfect, right? You're, you're clearly working on it. Awesome. I'm working on it. <laughs> All right, Devin, go ahead. Um, I guess you could say my area of strength is um, finding out the whole story because to find the underlying, you know, issue, you have to have the whole story. And a lot of times people don't say the whole story. They come up with the first story and that's the one they're going to stick to. They're not going to say anything else but what they have. So I guess I would really, I find myself really trying to pull everything out of the person. Really just like, hey, just go ahead and tell us everything that happened from start to finish. Even if you think it's excessive, just tell us everything so we can really find out the underlying um, issue. My area of growth would probably be, um, the agreement portion. I'm more of a realist, so I think if you have issues, it's not always gonna be a happy ending, but I find myself not almost forcing people to the, like agree disagree, but like expecting an agree disagree. I think of myself, I need to just be more open and like, you know, willing to have them be like, oh, let's have an actual agreement. Like what you said about Erin, how she has like a um, positive disposition about her and everything. I, I feel like I should have that too. So like, they feel like they can Your, your audio is cutting out real bad. Is it? Can you, can you start from the top on that one? Can you hear me better? Yeah, 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 much better. Okay. <laughs> oh, my thing is squished. Um, my point area of weakness would be just um, having a positive disposition about the agreement portion. Okay. Tell for me most, more about that. For the most part, it's not that I don't expect them to, like, I don't want them to agree. I just don't really expect an actual agreement to come out of it. And it's not just being negative. It's just more being realist that I just, like, I find myself just not feeling like, okay, they're here. They have this really big argument that's been going on for weeks. Most likely they're not going to make an agreement. Like, I'm just being real. But I know I should really think, hey, they can't come up with an agreement. They usually do come up with an agreement. So, like, just have the positive disposition that Aaron has, where it's, like, positive, you know, hey, you guys or friends before, you can still be friends, you know. Not so much, like, over happy, but just, you know, not as negative, I guess you could say. <laughs> well, Devin, you're not negative. <laughs> but, um, not, no, you're really good. Don't, don't, don't do that. But um, ooh, I would say one of my strengths would be um, really listening to the disputants in hearing specific points that they say like especially when they're talking about their emotions you know i feel this and this and this or i you know when you said this it hurt my feelings this way and stuff like that because those are really key points in getting getting that across the other person so then the other person you know can feel empathy and understand you know hey, what I did, I really hurt somebody else, you know, and I should, you know, take responsibility for that. But, um, yeah, I think that's really important, especially with um, what Derek and Devin said about finding the underlying problem because most of the time, like Devin said, they'll come in here with their own problem and there will really be another issue that is the real cause. And, you know, that's really important in figuring out. But um, on the flip side, I would say one of my weaknesses, which I was really, really bad at while I was still in school, was 
you know, staying neutral and, you know, not biased because, you know, we would be in there having conversations like, oh, don't do this because whenever I did it, you know, blah, 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 this happened. That was really, really, I used to be really, really bad at that. So even today, I caught myself almost trying to tell them what their solution should be. And then I was like, oh, I can't say that. I can't. I have to stay neutral. And so... So I was like, let me not say that. So, yeah, that's one of my biggest weaknesses. Awesome. All right. So I think you've all been been really self-reflective um, in, through this whole process. Derek, you identified things that we've talked about previously that you really put into action in this mediation. Um, and I agree with all of your strengths, listening, really finding out the problem, um, and making our disputants feel very valued um, as part of the process and having it be a positive process. I think those are all of your strengths. All of the areas of growth you identified come from practice, right? Focusing basically on confidence um, in the process, which just means doing it a bunch, right? That's how we get build our confidence in it. And that's why we're here. Do you feel like this has helped you build some of your confidence? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Especially whenever you do more like public speaking, because I know I get tongue tied a lot. So. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I think my uh, audio is freezing. Can you can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes All we can right. Hear you. Awesome. All right. Okay. I think my computer is like malfunctioning. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, okay. Alexandra, do you have any more questions, comments, or can we hear from Cindy? That, that, that was it. I'm sorry that took way longer than, than we had planned. No, I no, got no. really into You're it. Good. Okay. <laughs> uh, Cindy, is there something that you'd like to add to something you'd like to ask? Well, first, I have some appreciations. Alexandria, wonderful feedback. Thank you so much for allowing the students to reflect. I think that's important that they are able to articulate what they feel good about doing in the mediation and what they want to work on. Um, and I hope you hear what each other's strengths and weaknesses are because whatever your, per your partner's weakness is, it's great if that's your strength. Mm -hmm. So Devin and Erin, I think that's why you work so well together because Devin, you are a realist and Erin is you know, it's nothing wrong with that because you work well together. Um, and Derek, you really worked well with Aaron today. I mean, I, I had, there was no indication you had never mediated together. I mean, it really was seamless and great transitions. Um, I really don't have anything that I felt that I could add to the conversation that Alexandria did not already cover. So I thought it was a great mediation. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, see, actually, I have a couple of questions about the, the document. That, yes. Uh, okay. Because the, besides some questions like, you know, the names, of course, uh, there were some questions about their ethnic uh, group. Their right? ethnicity. Mm -hmm. is, is that required? When we do, um, a lot of times when we're taking statistics, if we want to apply for a grant, they'll want to know, um, okay. and I didn't put gender in there, but they will we'll ask gender ethnicity questions. So it's really more for data collection. If they decide they don't want to answer it, they don't have to. Oh, I so I think what Erin did was great. She said, do you, do you have any issue answering this ethnicity question? So no, that is not a mandatory question. Okay. Okay, so it's, so it's an optional question, right? Yes, oh, and I can actually put optional on there. Okay, all right. Now, at one point, the question was to to the, to each disputant to, to describe their conflict, okay? Right. What was the purpose of asking them to describe the conflict once the conflict has been resolved? Are you talking about in the agreement itself? Right, because in the form that uh, we showed, Right. The, uh, uh, there was a, there was a kind of text space uh, <laughs> for describing the the the, uh, the conflict, right? Mm -hmm. right? And I thought that uh, once the conflict, since the conflict, by the time had been resolved, mm -hmm. it was like asking the, the this to think backwards. 
I understand. I understand. And you know, the reason why we've done that in the in the um, past is because it's for record keeping for our own records when we do statistics. But oh. I certainly can take that out. Okay. I no also, I noticed that there was no uh, paragraph space for writing up any additional terms that the the parties had agreed on. For example, okay. yesterday yesterday there was an issue about the lost uh, iPhone, right? Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. Be returned by a certain day and yes. so on. So, so and I still right? can put some more space in there. So this yeah, is great feedback. Yeah, you know, yeah, having yeah, another set yeah, of eyes to yeah. look at. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All, all right. Okay. A any other comments? Anybody? No. All right. Okay. I, I think that was great. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, everybody. All right. Okay. Oh. So in the next couple hours, I'm going to send you the link. The link to the video of this uh, simulation and I look forward to see you soon then. Okay, okay. when is our, when is our right. next time together? Is it next Wednesday? Oh, oh no, let, let me check. I think there's one on I Monday. I think it's next Monday. Next Monday? Monday. Thought it was the 27th. Yeah, there is one on Monday mm -hmm. and uh, it's, uh, it's about a, it's a prom, right? Oh, okay. oh. Yeah. oh wait, Devin, I think we're supposed to be the mediators on that one. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, because um, Derek was supposed to take Jada to prom, and then, oh, yeah, yeah. okay, I get it. Don't run it for us. The comedians are Eric <laughs> and David, right. and the participants are Derek and Jada. Yes. All right. Oh, one more, I have one more question or one more comment. Um, guys, make sure that you're doing um, the thing that I send you after the evaluation. Make sure oh, you're pulling those out, please. Okay. Okay. I I have a small request because I know that we were talking about it last week, you know, doing a three person mediation, mm -hmm. maybe next Monday when it comes to the whole prom thing, maybe Sam mm -hmm. could be like the other guy that Jada was supposed to go to the prom with or something. And so yeah. like, to, so then we could have the three-way mediation. Right. Sam, are you there? Like show up out of nowhere. Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm taking your girl to prom now. What? Yeah. It's going to be an intense mediation. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. Sam, are you okay with that? Yeah, totally. What, Wednesday? Yeah. Next Wednesday? No, Monday. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah, awesome. Monday, and, and Monday will be at what time, Cindy? It's uh, 5 p.m. Okay. Eastern time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we'll see you all on, uh, on Monday then. All right. Okay. You all have fun. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. All right, everybody. Bye.